Hello and welcome back. Today we have a special occasion. My amazing friend Victor made a free tutorial for my channel and thanks to him we have this cool and amazing scene on my Jinx animation. So if you appreciate his help maybe check out his amazing course and now you can get a nice discount while using the code in the description. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let's go. Hey guys and welcome to the first part. And what I want to do first is to just add in our references. So if you have downloaded your pictures already, all you need to do is to drag and drop them into your 3D viewport over here. So just drag and drop the references in. So I'm going to drag this front view, the side and the top one. And before we continue, I want to just um, left click them and go to this tab over here with a picture and turn on opacity. And that just gets rid of some jagged lines that you might have. For example, you can see it around here. But if I were to turn on opacity, it just clears it out a lot better. And now, aside from these um, angled view, I also want to add in a render view. So I'm going to just um, drag this corner down so that you'll make another editor. And I'm going to change this one into an image editor. And the point is so that you can drag and drop a transparent render at a three quarter view. So. The reason is so that we can see some details that you can't really see in this angled view. For example, like these ones. And I guess now we can continue. So what I'm going to do is to just first create two collections, one for the camera and lights and one for the references. And the reason why I have collections is to just organize things. And you can also just unclutter everything by hiding things. So I'm going to just um, select the camera and shift select the light to select them both. Press M and move to a collection. I'll hit new collection and call this camera and lights. Hit OK. And you can see now it has its own collection. And the cool thing is that you can press this checkbox to enable it on and off and it'll just hide and unhide them. And same thing for these. I'm going to shift select all of these and I'll press M, new collection, and I'll call this references. And I will also go through the trouble of renaming them. So just double click on the name and I'll call this ref underscore front. And you can probably guess what I'm going to name the other two. Okay. So now that we have renamed everything, I should probably go over the navigations once. So if you hold middle mouse, you can orbit around the scene. If you press shift and middle mouse, you can pan around. And if you use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. But aside from that, I also like to snap to viewpoints. So if you were to Press the tilde key, um, which is under your escape key. You can open this pie menu and you can look at different angles. So the most important ones are probably the right, the top, the front, and the camera view. Personally, I like to use numpad keys. So numpad 1 will go to the front view. Numpad 3 will go to the right view. Numpad 7 will go to the top view. And numpad 0 will go to the camera view. And the camera view is whatever your scene renders. So if your camera is looking at it like this, then this is probably the angle at which you're going to render. So now I guess we can start moving our references. And just for reference, I'm going to just delete this cube by pressing X and deleting it while it's selected. And I'll press Shift A and add in a monkey. And the reason is because we know which way is pointing forward, which is this monkey. And we're going to move our references accordingly. So I'm going to just hit Alt R to clear the rotation and Alt G to clear the location. And this is for the um, side reference. And I'll press R to rotate it. And whenever you want to rotate it on one angle, you can press R to rotate and press X or Y or Z to snap to a, a axis. So if I were to hit Y and X, you can snap it to the X and I'm just going to hold control and rotate it till it's 90 degrees. You can see on the top left over here, um, what angle you're snapping to. So I'm trying to get it to 90 and left click to confirm it. If you right click, then it'll just cancel the action. So I'll press R and Z to rotate it once again. I'm going to move it um, 90 degrees in this direction. And another thing I want to do is to just move it uh, a bit towards the monkey's left. So I'll press G and X and that'll just let me move it in this direction. Now, same thing for this. I'm going to just hit Alt R and Alt G to reset the rotation and location. And I'm going to press R, X to rotate it on X by 90. And this one, we want to put it behind, like so. And this one, we want to put it under. So Alt R and Alt G, 
rotated on the Z by 90 degrees, so it's facing the same direction as this reference. And I'll just press G and Z to move it down. So now, if you were to try to move to different viewpoints, so if I were to hit the tilde key and go to the front, it's going to be behind this reference. If I were to go to the right, it's going to be behind. If I go to the top, it's going to be under. So that's pretty much it for adding in the references. So now we're going to actually start modeling. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on the front part of this turret. And what I'm going to do first is you just delete this monkey. And in order to add in a mesh, you can hit Shift A and add in a cylinder. It's much better to always just add in a mesh that most matches your model. In this case, my one is eight sides already. So make sure that you go to the box over here and turn it to eight sides so that it matches the number of sides of this one. I'll go into numpad three to go into the side view, rotate it, and I'll press S to scale it down. And I'll just move it around here. Looks like the reference isn't really too aligned. So I'm just gonna select the both of these and move it up a bit, maybe till here. So it does look like I need to move it to the right a bit. Yep. Okay. So now I'm gonna just go into edit mode on this by pressing tab. And you'll see that there are many different selects for text. And if you press the number two or select this, you have your edge select or number three is the face select. So just cycle between this based on what you wanna what you wanna um, select. And in this case, I'll just select this face le with left click and I'll just press G and Y to move it back. And I'll use this tool, which is a shear tool. And what it does is when you have this face selected, it'll rotate it, but it won't um, kill the overall height. For example, if I were to rotate it normally, it'll just mess it up a bit. So now we have the shape, which is, pre which is pretty cool. And now I'll work on the cylinder over here. So I'll press Shift A again, or rather, one thing you can do is to change where your 3D cursor is so that whenever you make an object, it'll spawn exactly where you want it to. So for example, if I were to make an object now, it'll just spawn at where the 3D cursor is. So what I'll do is just select this and press Shift S and press the cursor to select it. And what it does it's, is that it moves the 3D cursor here. So I'll add a new one. Make it a cylinder and I'll change the sides back to 32 because this one is a smooth cylinder. I'll just rotate it and move it back a bit. I'll scale it down till here. And now I'll go into edit mode and I'll go into wireframe, which you do by pressing Z and wireframe. And that just lets you see through everything. And I'll just box select all of this and I'll press G and Y to move it back till here. So, yep. And actually we need to move it back a bit more, maybe till here. And I'm pretty happy with this. And for now, we're going to start working on this part. So if you were to take a look at this reference over here, it's kind of the same shape as this part over here. So what I'll do is to just go into edit mode on this, this part, and I'll select this face. And I'll press shift D to duplicate it, right click so it stays in place and P to separate by selection. And whatever face you have selected will be a different object now. So now I'll move it to the back a bit till maybe here. And then I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'll select everything with A and press E to extrude it. We'll select this face, press I to inset. And I'm going to make sure that I match the reference a bit. So maybe till here. And I will press E to extrude it. So just make sure you're matching the reference. And now we've pretty much made this shape as well. And you'll see that there's actually a hole for when the for where the bullets go through. So I'm definitely going to just press Shift E to duplicate this and move this forward a bit. And I'm going to go into the front view, go into the wireframe, and I'll just go into edit mode and scale it up a bit so that it matches the hole a bit. So maybe till here. And what I'll do is to do our first Boolean operation. So I'll select this mesh, go to the modifiers over here, add modifier Boolean, and I will set the color pick object to this one. And if I were to hide this by selecting and press H, you'll see that it's cutting away. So for now, you can see that's working. So we will apply the modifier. And the way you do that is just to select this and press Control A to apply. So now I can just delete this and this mesh now has that hole. Okay. So now um, we can talk about the bevel modifier and doing a lot of smoothing. So first thing I want to do is to just Right click and shade smooth. And you'll see that the shading doesn't look too good. And that's because we have to turn on auto smooth, which you can find in this property over here and turning on auto smooth. 
And I can also go to the modifiers here and turn on bevel. And I'll turn the segments up to four. And also make sure whenever you use the modifier to just press control A and apply scale. Because whenever we scale everything, it'll mess our bevel modifier up. So it's definitely important to remember to do that. So I'll set the amount down to 0 0.05. Well, 0 0.005. And you'll see that the shading kind of looks still a bit off. And what you can do is to go to shading and turn on hardened normals. The hardened normals won't work unless you turn on auto smooth in this panel as well. So same thing. I'm just going to copy all the modifiers over. So I'm going to just shift select all of these and make sure I select this one last. You'll see that it's highlighted in a different color and press control L and copy modifiers. And you'll see that the modifiers are copied, but we need to apply the scale for these two or else it won't work too well. And right click Shade Smooth, right click Shade Smooth, turn on Auto Smooth for the both of these as well. So now the shading and everything looks pretty nice. And what I can do now is to just go to over here to change my matte cap. So I'll change to maybe this one and I'll turn on Cavity just so I can see everything a bit better. So something like this. Now, you can see that um, we have two other ones that are being rotated. And instead of modeling them all by hand, you can definitely um, do a, a, an array modifier. But in my case, I think I'm just going to stick to something easy and just use the 3D cursor as a, rotation, as a rotation point. So you can see the 3D cursors over here. And OK, you know what? I'll just use array modifier. So move the 3D cursor to world origin. And then I will um, add an array modifier to this one and make sure that you also add in an object call an empty. So for your array modifier, make sure you set your object offset, set it to object offset and turn off the relative offset and set the object offset object to this empty. Now you see that it's rotating a bit weird, but that's because you need to apply your rotation. Okay, so for now, you also need to apply your location and it should be pretty right. So you see that um, everything is all in the same place. But um, what you actually need to do is to turn your count up. And now you can rotate your empty. So if you want it to be rotated three times evenly, then you would divide 360 by 3, which is 120. So I'll rotate this on a Y by 120. And you'll see that it's being copied over perfectly. So same thing. I'm just going to select the both of these and select this last. Press Control L and copy modifiers. And you'll see that it's pretty messed up. And that's because we also need to apply the rotation location. So just remember to apply your location and make sure the empty is in the middle of the world because you need your, your object origin, which is this orange point, to be the same as the or object origin of the empty. So now, because the location is applied, the both of them are just in the center of the world. And I'm going to start by working on this part behind the barrels. So if you were to go into side view, you'll see our reference. So let me start by adding in a cylinder. And instead of 32 sides, I'm going to make it 64 sides because this one is a bit bigger. Generally, the, the bigger your object is, the, the more the sides you have to have for it to look equally smooth. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to move it here. I'm going to scale it till here just so it matches the reference. And something like this is already pretty good. Make sure to apply your scale or else your bevel modifier might not work out. I'm going to go into edit mode on this. And if you have a weird gizmo like this, it's because I there's a skew button that's on and you need to turn it back to your select box. So I'll press I to inset while I have that face selected. I'm going to extrude it in a bit like so. I'm going to press shift E to duplicate it. Right click so it stays in place. P to separate by selection. And now it's its own object. Now I'll go into edit mode on this and I'll just extrude it out maybe till here. And I'm going to also go into the front view again. And I'm going to just match the reference by insetting it in and extruding it in again. So you have these two shapes. So I'm going to copy the modifiers over from this one. So I'm just shift select both of these and select this last. Press Ctrl L, copy modifiers. We will copy the array by mistake. So just press X to remove them like so, and I'll right click, shade smooth, right click, shade smooth. 
and I will just turn on auto smooth for this as well as for this. Okay, so um, one thing that I should mention is that um, for example, with this object, if you press the slash key, you can like go into isolation view. But one thing is that this face isn't really visible. So like you can just get away by like selecting this face and deleting it. And if I were to delete it, you'll see that it isn't really part of the mesh. So we can definitely save some um, optimize the mesh a bit by just deleting faces that we don't really see. Okay, so let me work on the cylindrical part. So this one's pretty straightforward. I can just um, shift D to duplicate this part and I'll just go into edit mode and I'm gonna select it and press S to scale up. Make sure when you scale it this time to only do it in edit mode cause you will mess up your modifiers otherwise. And I'll just scale it on the Y like this and I'll put it somewhere around here. So I'm going to go into the reference. So something like this is pretty good. Okay. So now let's work on this part in the middle. So I'll just create a cylinder. And I'm going to make sure that this one is 32 sides. It helps to make it a bit less sides because this time we're going to use a Boolean operation. I'm going to just make sure that it matches our reference. And I'm going to make it a bit thinner to start just cause we're going to do a weird boolean. And let me just make sure I'm matching the reference. Okay. So something like this. And I'm going to duplicate this with shifty, go into modifiers and I'll just turn off the bevel and apply the array just so that we have um, this mesh, which they're all like applied arrays, but you also don't have to boolean. And I'll select this mesh because we're gonna we're gonna do a cut now. Add a modifier, um, boolean, and let me just remember what's the name of this mesh. So cylinder zero zero seven, and I'll just do a boolean here. Now I'll just apply the boolean, and if I were to just delete this mesh and go into isolated view on this, then you'll see that we have this nice little shape. Okay, so now we can add in our bevel modifier and make sure that it's 0 0.05. Okay. So um, you'll see that this time, and let me just apply my scale. So you see that this time, our bevels may have been a bit thin, and that's because we have a bit of pinching. For example, over here after the boolean, we have some edges that are really close to each other. So just double tap G and just slide it, or you can just slide it in this direction to be honest. So I'll just slide it so that they're just overlapping with each other. So this one's fine, this one's fine. These ones are all fine as well. And now since we have them at the same place, this is a term called double vertices and you always have to get rid of them or else nothing will work. So select everything with A while you are in vertex select, right click and merge vertices by distance. So now our Boolean should be working pretty good. Make sure it is at four segments, shade smooth, and I'll go into auto smooth and turn this on as well. And also make sure in shading, you turn on harder normals. And now our mesh should look pretty good. So for now, I'm just going to scale it till it meets reference like this. And I'm pretty happy with something like this. Okay. So there are many places we can start working on, but I think I'll work on this small tubes first, just so that it would tell me, it will give me a good idea of where I should place these parts. So I'll press shift A, add in a cylinder. And in this case, the tubes are really small. So I'll give it 16 sides and I'll rotate on X by 90 and I'll just scale it till I match the reference on a side view. So maybe something like this is already pretty good. Just make sure it juts out a bit over here. Okay. And in the front view, let us make sure that it's matching our reference. Okay. So now I'm gonna just apply all transforms and I'm gonna add a mirror modifier. And I'm going to make sure that it's mirrored on a Y as well. So by default, it mirrors based on your origin, which is this orange part. You can definitely choose objects to mirror around, but it's fine for now. So let me just check the reference. So you can see that like this part isn't aligned too much. So one thing I would do is to just move it till I'm like somewhat close to this part. And I would even go into object mode and just move it down a bit. So something like this. 
because it's a bit more important to just align it with the bottom one. Okay, so now um, you can just copy the modifiers. So Control L, copy modifiers, or not actually, because we had a mirror. So I'll just add it by hand. Add in a bevel, four sides. Make sure the, that the amount is the same as the rest. And turn on shading, harden normals, and turn on auto smooth. And right click and shade smooth. Okay. So now we've created this tiny little tube and I can just work on this part now. So in this case, I'm going to work on this right side first and then later I will, I will um, mirror it to the other side. So for now, I'll just select all these faces and extrude it. And you'll see that I took a bit more than I should, but it's fine. Well, I guess I'll just take these to be honest okay so here and i'll just select this vertice and double tap g to slide it just to match the reference over here a bit and i'll just slide it on this one as well just because i want to match the reference a bit better and i'll slide it till here okay so these vertices we don't really need so i'm going to just slide it by selecting it and double tapping g and then now we have a pretty good shape so i'll right click and merge vertices by distance while we'll I have every vertice selected and our bevel should be working again. And I guess now we can start making our mirror modifier. So I'll go to the modifiers over here and add in a mirror. Make sure that the mirror is always before all the other modifiers. So just select this and go up. Okay. And in order to make it work properly, just make sure that you go to wireframe and just box select with the shortcut B and just select all the vertices on the left and press X and delete it. And you'll see that now this half is being mirrored onto the other half. Okay, so let me start working on this part. So I'll just do something like this, extrude it out a bit, and I will just slide these two vertices, merge by distance, and I can definitely select these two edges and bevel by hitting Control B and beveling, Press C to turn on clamping. And I think around this many sides is good enough. So it's definitely going out a bit more than I'd like it to. So what I'll do is to just move it by hand. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just move it by hand a bit in by pressing G while I have them selected. And this one. Okay. And I also have to go and merge vertices again. So now you'll see that our tubes isn't too aligned. So let me just move it in edit mode a bit. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so now we've pretty much made the shape and now I can go and make these ones in the back. So I'll just press Shift D to duplicate this and I'll just move it to the back. And I'm go, going to my side reference, moving it to around here. And this time you'll see that it's a bit different. So let me just move this part here. And we've pretty much got the shape. I will work on this plate over here. So you can just duplicate this one as well. And you can just move it to the back. And it's the same as this one in the back. Okay, so you see now that we have like some open faces over here. But for now, I'll just leave it as it is. And I will just work on this bottom one. So you'll see this bottom one isn't the same rounded shape as it was in this one. So one thing you can do is to just use the mirror modifier again. So I'm going to just box select and delete these faces, I mean these vertices. And now you have this one quarter and I'll just turn on the mirroring on the Y. And you'll see that this part is also being mirrored onto the bottom. So in this case, I'm going to start filling this face. So you can definitely do it in a few ways. But I'll just shift select the both of these faces and I'll press, I'll select this edge and press F till it fills it one by one. And it should fill pretty well. Yep. Okay. And I'll just match this part to the back of it. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with something like this. And for this part in the back, I'm going to also just copy it over. So I'll copy this part over. 
and I will just move it to the back. And this time we're keeping this part, which is the rounded part. So I'll just go into edit mode. Same thing as before. I'm going to just go and box select all the vertices on the top. And I will just turn a mirror on for the Y, I believe. And I think I deleted like the wrong number of vertices. So let me just go back. So I wasn't supposed to delete these ones. So now if you were to turn on Y mirror, it should look pretty good. And I think I can just apply the mirror first and just scale it down a bit. Like so. So now it should match everything pretty well. And I think in this case, we can definitely um, fill these faces. Just F to fill. And for this one in front as well, I'll just press F to fill and I'll just dissolve these vertices. Or maybe... Oh, actually when I fill it, it looks a bit weird. So I shouldn't fill it for now. Oh, it's because I have these faces over here. Okay, so I'll just fill these ones. And it should be good. So now we're pretty much done with the front part. Uh, I guess I'll just work on this part and we can call it done for this video. So for this part, we can just add in a cube. So Shift A, add in a cube, and I'll just scale it down and move it till here. And I want to make sure that I'm just planting it like so. And looking at it from the front as well. So it's a lot thinner. Yep. And now I'll just move this part up till here. This vertice, I'll move down with G and Z. And I'll select these two vertices with the circle select. And I'll just move this one till here. So now the shape is pretty good. Add in your mirror modifier and make sure that your origin is back in the world. So press Control A and all transforms to apply all your transforms. And now I think we can just add in our bevels. So just shift select that circle, copy modifiers, and I'll just add it. And I guess I need to add the mirror again. That didn't apply the first time. So it should be okay. Right click shade smooth and make sure to also turn on auto smooth. Okay, so now it looks clean. So let us work on this eight sided cylinder. So what I'll do is to just press um, shift A cylinder and this one, I'll make sure that it is eight sides and I'll just rotate it on a Y by 90, scale it down. And I'm gonna just make sure that it matches our reference over here. Now I'll press R to rotate and control to move it a bit. So I wanna rotate it like perfectly. So, um. If you want to rotate it so that the top is exactly over here, uh, rotate it by 22.5 degrees, I believe. So just press R to rotate while you're in a side view. Press 22.5 and it should be pretty head on. Okay, so I'll just move this over here. Make sure that this mesh matches our front view in terms of thickness. And like this should be pretty good. I'll just copy the modifiers and make sure that I apply my scale first and my transforms and it should be pretty good. So on the side, we definitely also have a 32 sided cylinder as well. So I'm gonna just um, go into edit mode and just select everything and press shift S and cursor to select it so that the cursor is over here. I'll go to mesh, go to cylinder, make sure that it's 32 sides. And since the cursor is over here, our cylinder is being made over here as well. And I'll just scale it down and rotate it to fit the mesh. Same thing as before, just copy your modifiers, um, apply all transforms, and also make sure that you turn on auto smooth, right click shade smooth, and it should be good. And also shade smooth on this as well. And turn on auto smooth. Okay. So let me just move the inside a bit because we don't really need it. So I'll just delete this face for now. And it should be looking pretty good. Okay, so for now, I'll select this with Shift D and duplicate it and press Y so it stays over here. And I'm going to go to the side view to make sure that it matches the reference. So somewhere around here. And let me just move this part a bit further back. Okay. So while I have this selected, I'm going to go into the front view. And you'll see that this part is actually super different. 
I'm gonna just apply the mirror modifier on this one and I'm gonna go to work on it. So I believe all you need to do is to just move two vertices, one over here and one over here. Um, I'm not trying to match the reference perfectly, but um, you can always do it if you want to. Okay, so somewhere around here is pretty good. For now, I'm gonna mirror it from the left to right. So again, I'll just go into edit mode, select all the vertices on the left, and I will delete them. And I'll add in a mirror modifier. Like so. So now it should be mirrored pretty well. And this face in the back, I think we don't need it, so I'll just delete it. As well as, I believe, this one. We don't really need it as well. Okay. So from here to here, there are definitely a lot of things that you can do. And let me just check my model. Okay. So I'll duplicate it from here to here. And I will just make sure that I delete these vertices with a circle select. I'll press F to fill it. And it should match the one in the back over here quite well. And I will also give this a bit of width. And for the circular part, I'm gonna just, um, I'll select the edge loop and I'll just press E to extrude it out from here to here. So now we've pretty much got the shape. Sometimes you'll get some weird artifacts like this and that's cause we have an interior face. So just go into wireframe and just delete these two faces and it should be working pretty well. Okay, so for this part, for now, I'm just gonna add in a big cylinder. So maybe I can get away with just shifty duplicating this and I will just press P and separate by selection. And from here to here, I'll just move it like so. Make sure that I am matching the reference as well as I can. So it's still here. Okay. So um, there is another circle around here. So I'm just gonna select this, press Shift D to duplicate, right click so it stays in place and press P to separate by selection. And I'll just select all of this and just match it like this. I'll press E to extrude. In this case, um, it's actually a bit bigger than the barrel itself. So I'm gonna just apply the mirror modifier. Make sure you put the mirror above the bevel whenever you're applying modifiers. And for now, I'm gonna just select this face loop. And it does look like over here, I might have double vertices. So I'll select everything and merge vertices by distance. I guess that wasn't the case. I'll just shift, I mean, I'll select the face loop anyways. Go into side view and I will just make it bigger from here. Okay. So right now I'll just smooth this and it's definitely really bothering me how, okay. So I guess I had this face over here. That was a problem. Okay. So it should be fine now. Okay. So we have the barrel, we have this and we can work on this part over here. So this part can be straight, pretty straightforward. I'll just select this face. I mean, this edge shift D to duplicate. Right click so it stays in place, P, and separate by selection so it's its own edge. And I'll just press E to extrude while I'm in object mode and extrude this part out. And I'll just extrude it from here to here. I'm going to just move it so that it aligns with this edge um, pretty well. And for this part, I'm going to just do a tiny bit of adjustment just so that I can have it kind of similar to the overall edge of this. So maybe I'll just put it till here. So it does look like, if I were to look at it from the front view, this part is a lot more um, out than that part. So this one goes all the way up. I mean, to um, take away from that, so I'm just going to delete the faces like this. And I will just join them from here to here. So I'm just um, control selecting to like select the shortest path. And let's see, how close am I? I can definitely make it like one more. And I'm gonna just fill in the faces by just selecting these edges and pressing F to fill. And it should be pretty close now. Now I do feel that I can move this part a bit further up just so that it matches the angle a bit better. And I'll just make, it sure, make sure that it matches this one at least. Okay, so now, 
I will just add in a loop cut by hitting Control R and selecting this edge. And I'll just hit Control B to bevel from here to here. Now um, I need to do an extrude downwards, but it will mess up my model. So what I'll do is you just go into isolation view and I'll try to extrude down like so. And you'll see that it'll make up a, a lot of bad faces. So I'll just delete those faces. And I'll alt select to select the loop and just press F to fill them up again. So you have some pretty nice loops. Okay. So now I also need to cut a hole in there. So it's kind of hard to see, but it's from here to here, I believe. And I'll just put another loop cut here and I'll hit control B to bevel. And I'm going to just bridge these two edge faces. So I'll hit, I'll select these two, but shift select and I'll right click and press bridge faces. And it should make like a pretty decent hole from there to there. You could uh, move these edges a bit just so that it would match the overall um, shape of the hole. So I'll just do that for now. So from here to here, and I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'll do is to just shift select all these four edges and I'll press shift D to duplicate, right click so, so that it stays in place. And I will press P and separate by selection so that it is its own object now. I'll select everything, press F to fill them. And I will just press E to shoot it outwards a bit. And I'll press I to inset. And this one, I'll just, well, instead of inserting it like that, I'll select these two faces and inset both of them at the same time maybe till here and I'll right click and hit bridge faces. So now we have a nice little hole and I'll just alt select this um, bottom face loop and I'll hit alt S, which will just let it move according to its normals. So I'll move it till here for now. And this one in the back, I'll just um, match the reference a bit. So I'll just move this one here and this one I'll move it till here. And we should have like a pretty good shape for now. So just make sure I don't have any problems. You do have a bit of irregular faces, but it's fine because no one looks at the bottom. And for now, I think we've made this part. So I'll just work on this part now. So this one's pretty easy. You can just select the face and you press Shift D, right click so that it stays in place, E, and separate by selection. And you'll have this one face. And I'm going to just make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to do an extrusion with a shortcut E. So maybe till here. And I'll press S to scale it down. And now, since it is its own object, I can definitely add in an array modifier and make sure that you apply all your transforms. And also, um, instead of relative offset, I'll just do a constant offset and I'll do it in this direction, in a Y direction. And I'll make sure that the X direction is zero. So it should be going here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the count should be like five so that you have six total. And I'll turn the distance a bit lower like this. So we have this nice little shape and I'm going to mirror it over to the other side. Or oh, I guess it did because we copied over from this mesh, which had a mirror as well. Okay, so I'm going to start working on the back. And to start, I might just start using a curve modifier. So what I'll do is to just press Shift A and add in a curve. And for this one, I'll just add in a path. Once the path is added, you can... Oh, and let me turn off my proportional editing. Sometimes I always turn it on by mistake. Just make sure you don't turn it on because you're going to accidentally move things. I'm just going to keep it somewhere around the side over here. And I'm going to start by adding in some geometry. So make sure to increase your bevel depth, but you also want to decrease the resolution a bit. And change your shading to flat. So in this case, the resolution is supposed to be one and you'll have this little um, six-sided shape. And I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna just try my best to match the reference. Something like so. Another thing that's pretty important is that this one needs to be exactly at the middle of the world. So I'll try to put it at zero. At zero on a global. 
And another thing is that I need to make sure that the vertices is aligned with this one. So I'll just go to vertex and I'll press G and Y and snap to this vertex by holding control. And it should be snapped pretty well. And so the reason is so that we can mirror it easily. Like so. And make sure to apply all your transforms. And it should look pretty good. Now the geometry is super dense, so I can definitely get away with making it a lot less. So for now, I'll, I'll turn the resolution preview to something a lot lower. Maybe something like a 4 would be good enough. And I'm pretty happy with something like this. So when you're done with the curve, you can just go to Object, Convert to Mesh. And now just make sure that you select everything. Right click and Merge Vertices. Because sometimes in the middle, you might have um, double vertices. In this case, it didn't happen, but it might happen sometimes. Okay, so I guess we can add in our bevel modifiers. So just add in bevel. And I'll make sure to apply my scale. Turn up my segments to around 4. And change the number to 0 0.005. Turn on hard and normals and turn on auto smooth. And it should look pretty good when you shade it smooth. And I'm pretty happy with this. So I guess I can start working on the back part already. And it does look like over here, I have like a bit of a beveling problem. And that's because you need to start using bevel weights. So, or maybe you can get away with using a smaller angle. So for now, let me try turning my angle lower to around 27. And it looks like it is fixed. Okay, so for the back part, I can duplicate this one. I'll just select all these parts. And I'll just control click to just select the shortest path. And I'll select this one as well. To just select up to here. And I think up to this point is good enough. You may have to like try try again if the shape doesn't match up. But for me, um, I already tried it already and it should be pretty good. So I'll just hit Shift D to duplicate it. Right click so that it stays in place. P to separate by selection. And now it is a new object. Now I'll just select all of it and press F to fill the face. Now another thing is that the edge over here, you need to make sure that your 3D cursor is over there. So I'll hit Shift S and press cursor to select it and it should be in the middle of this edge. So now I'll select everything with A and I'll go to side view. And I'm gonna use the spin tool. Now um, for now, I'll just left click on it once and you'll see that it's a bit messed up and that's cause we need to change the axes. So for me, it'll be minus one for the X, zero for the Z, but also I need to turn the angle down to 90. So now we should have a pretty good shape. And what I will do is to just press E to extrude it along this direction. And now we have a pretty good shape already. So another thing I need to do is to just um, rotate it a bit. So you see it's a bit slanted and it does look like my bottom part is a bit too, too thin. So I'll just fix it a bit later. So I'm gonna rotate it and try to make it fit best I can. So maybe do something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but for now, I'll just stay with something like this and I'll definitely bring it a bit lower. And this part, I'll bring it a bit higher. And I'm gonna just fix the thing. So I'll just select everything and I'll press Alt S, which will just scale it along their normals. And this should probably be pretty good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with something like this. Now, let me work. Let me just shade smooth this part and turn on auto smooth. I guess it's on already. And this part may have been a bit too big, so I'll just hit Alt S to scale it down a bit, but just a bit. And now I'm gonna add these black bracings on the side. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I think I can just get away with, okay, with just um, selecting these edges from here to here. I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it, right click so, it's, so that it stays in place, and I'll press P and separate by selection. So now we have if it'll let me select it, yep, this edge, and I'll just press E to extrude it in that direction. And you'll see that uh, it isn't exactly the shape that we want. So let's just delete the bottom vertices. And now I'm gonna turn on um, face snapping. So go here, turn on face. Let me just disable this because I accidentally turned it on. And what I'm gonna do is to just uh, press E to extrude, and I'm gonna press C to move it downwards. And then I'm gonna just press G and X to snap it onto this face. And I'll just create a loop cut G and X. 
holding control will let you snap onto the surface. So I'm pretty happy with something like this. It could be a bit more smooth. So let me just um, look at it in local view. So yeah, I can definitely slide this one and it will already be pretty good. So now auto merge is on and I'm just gonna even the faces a bit more, maybe to something like this. And now we can just select this, add in a solidify modifier, which will just add a bit of thickness. And I'll put the thickness maybe around this much and I'll make sure that it's before the bevel and that will just add a bevel. Now, um, before I continue, it does look like I should apply my solidify first. So I'm gonna just do that. So apply my solidify and let me take a look. So we have this part in the middle, just press X and delete face. And I'm gonna just move my mirror before my bevel bevel and I'm going to make sure clipping's on and what it does is that like whenever it's at the middle it'll just stick well and it should be sticking right now okay so we've pretty much made this first brace over here and I'll just put it down and I'm going to right click and chase mood and it should look pretty decent and now I'm going to make I believe there is a second one and this first one actually has a bit of a shape to it I'm going to go to the back view by hitting control and numpad one. And I think in this case, I'm just gonna hide the reference. So control and numpad one, and I'm gonna just do this. So something like this to match the reference a bit better. And I'm gonna just slide these vertices. So it kind of makes this kind of shape. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the shape. So let me just work on the brace behind that. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We can just duplicate this. So I'll just control and select these edges, shift D to duplicate, right click so that it stays in place, P and separate by selection. So I'll select this and I'll move it in the back a bit. And same thing as before, I'm gonna just add in the solidify and make sure that it's before the bevel modifier. And then I'm gonna change the thickness to match it a bit better. And this time we've made sure that our solidify is before the mirror, so it didn't really have that problem anymore. And I'm pretty happy with something like this. So now we've pretty much made the back, and I guess I will continue by working on this small part over here. And then let's say that we're done for this video. Okay, so first I would just start by adding in this part, which you can do pretty easily by just duplicating, well, I'll just add in a cube for now. And I'm gonna move it and just get the rough scale of it. And I'm gonna move it somewhere around here. Go to the right view and try to match it with the reference as best I can. So this one's here. I'm gonna move it back and match the reference here. So this is the first part. Make sure to apply your scale. And let me just unhide the front view because I need to get the width of it, right? I'm gonna scale it on the X a bit, like so. And it should be pretty good. I'll just move this part a bit lower so that it's touching the bottom. Same as this one. I'll just make sure that it's touching. So something like this. I'll add in a bevel modifier or, or rather, I'm gonna just copy it from this one. So I'll just shift select that one and press control L copy modifier and it should copy it and make sure that you also turn on your auto smooth as well. Okay. So now we have this black part, which you can create by just duplicating this, I believe, making it a bit thinner and I'll press E to extrude it upwards. And now this shape, you can see it in a side view a bit better, probably. It kind of just ends over here. So let me just select everything and press P and separate by loose parts. That's so that they're both different objects. And I will just move this one over here. And I'll just add in loop cut by hitting control R and adding a loop cut from here to here, like so. And I'm gonna just move it over here. I kind of want to make sure that it's aligned well. So I'm gonna just make sure that we're back in vertex um, snapping and hold when you press G and Y, hold control so that it snaps onto these vertices. I just want these ones to be as straight as possible. Okay, so now we've pretty much made this shape. I'm just gonna go into the top view, go into wireframe, and I'm gonna try to get this right. So I'll press I to inset, and I'll hold control so that it insets out in that direction instead. 
and now I'm going to add a loop cut here, oh, here and here. I just added it and right clicked so that it would go down. And now I'm going to alt select these face loops and I'm going to move it down. And before I do, I need to add an another loop cut actually. So I'm just going to add another loop cut here and here. And I'm going to alt select the both of these and move it down. For now it's a bit rough, but we can get it right soon. Okay, so I'll move it down till here and I will select these two and I'll move it down as well. Okay, and now I'm going to select these edges. So I'm shift selecting them, hitting control B to bevel. I'm going to bevel it till here and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up and we're going to have this nice little shape. So now I'll just right click and merge vertices by distance. And now let me just fix this part. So I'll just select these vertices with a circle select and I'll just scale it in a bit. And these ones as well, I'll select it with a circle select and scale it in a bit. So now we have this nice little shape and there's definitely a torus in the top where you use to latch your strap onto. So I'm just gonna make that. So Shift A, add in a mesh and this one can be the torus. And this is way too many sides. So you can make it, I guess 24 sides is good enough. And for this one, I'll just have it be eight sides. So this is pretty good. I'll just rotate it on X by 90 and I'm gonna put it over here. So now I'm gonna just delete these bottom vertices real quick by box selecting and deleting them. I'm gonna select these two and extrude it down. Now I'll scale this down a bit and move this. And you'll see that compared to the reference, it's a bit um, thin. So you can always hit Alt S to just scale it up like that. And now just move these two a bit lower. So something like that is already good enough for me. I'll just right click and shade smooth. And now we have these little grooves as well as um, over here, we have some bolts that we missed. So I guess what I can do is to just start over here. So I'll just, I'm going to edit mode on this cursor to select it and I'll put one here. I'll add in a cylinder and make sure that this one is eight sides. Scale it down and I'll rotate it on the X by 90. And for now, I'm just gonna go into edit mode, select these two faces, press I to insert. And while those faces are still selected, I'll just bridge faces. And I'll just scale it down a bit and move it somewhere around here. So something like this. And all you need to do is you just, uh, oh, I guess I can take the same origin as this. So I will add a mirror modifier and I'll just, Take the mirror object as this one, and I'll just mirror it on the X and the Z as well. And it should copy like the same area. And now I'll add in the bevel modifier. Again, 0 0.005. Make sure you apply your scale as well. And turn the segments up. And I guess in this case, we should make it a bit smaller because it's a really small object. So maybe something like this. And now shade smooth, go into shading, Harder normals and turn on auto smooth. And we got this nice little shape and let's work on this one. So I'll shift S put my cursor here and I'll add in another cylinder. In this case, I think I'll put it to 12 and just scale it down. I'll rotate it on the Y a bit just so that it's angled like that part. And I'm going to just double tap G and just move it a bit. Just make sure that it matches the surface a bit better. Okay. So something like this. I will now add in a bevel modifier. So add modifier, or maybe I can copy it from some other part. So maybe I can copy it from this one because this one's just mirroring left to right. Okay. And now it's being mirrored, but I need to apply all transforms and now it should be good. Right click and shade smooth. And I think you got this part as well. And let me just make sure I'm matching the reference the best I can. I'll also scale this part a bit down and I'll move it lower as well. Okay, so in order to make this part, you have to start by creating a cube. And I'm gonna just scale it down and just try to fit the rough scale of it. 
I'm going to put it somewhere around here to start. And it looks like um, I've made this part a bit too small, but it's fine for now. I'll put it somewhere here. And I'm going to press G and Y to move it. And I'll press Ctrl R and add these two loop cuts. And I'm going to put this one over here. And it should be pretty decent. Now I'm going to make sure that it is in the middle of the world. So while it's selected, I'm going to press the N key to go into the side view. Go into, and let me just turn on the shortcut key while I'm here. And I'm also going to make sure that I move this to the zero. Now press numpad one to look from the front view. And I'm going to try to get it as right as I can. So maybe somewhere around here. Okay. I'm going to add in some modifiers. Or maybe I can just copy it from this one. So I'll select this and shift select this. I'll hit control L and link modifiers or copy modifiers. And also make sure that you apply your scale. So select it, press control A and all transforms. And now the bevel should be working pretty well. Make sure you shade smooth and also turn on auto smooth. Now we can work on this part. So you can start by adding in a cylinder. And I think for now, 24 sides would be enough. I'll scale it down and just move it. I'm going to make sure that it is the rough size of this. I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to just select these vertices and press E to extrude it upwards, maybe till around here. So I'll select everything and hit X and do a limited dissolve. And what it does is that it dissolves all the edges on a flat surface. So you just get left with the silhouette itself. So now we have this. I'm going to just rotate it so that fits our reference a bit. So it should be fine. And it could be a bit longer. So I'm going to just circle select these vertices and I'm going to move it out a bit. So maybe till somewhere around here. Now I'm going to just scale it on the X a bit and make sure that on the side view it matches the reference a bit better. So something like this. I can definitely make this part a bit wider. And for now, I'm going to mirror this from left to right. So I'm going to just take this one because this one's also using a mirror. Hit Control L and do a copy modifiers. Make sure for this one, you just apply all transform. Press Control A and apply all transforms. Right click and shade smooth. And also make sure to turn on auto smooth. And now we have this shape. So now we can start working on this part. So definitely I want to put it in the middle of this. So I'll go into edit mode and shift select the both of these vertices. Press Shift S and cursor to select it. And that'll just put it somewhere in between them. And I'll just press um, Shift A, add in a mesh. And I'll change this one to 32 sides and I'll scale it down. I'll rotate it on the um, X by 90, well, Y by 90. And I'm gonna just scale it up and just have the rough shape of it. Now I'm gonna make sure that it matches the reference. So here to here. And it does look like there's a bit of an inset as well as an extrusion. So I'm just going to make sure that I convey that. So I to inset and I'll bring it out a tiny bit like so. And I'll do an extrude like so. And I'll do an I to inset. And I'm going to make sure this inset is matching the overall width. So maybe somewhere around here. And I'll just press E to extrude it in like so. So something like this is already pretty good for me. We also need to um, copy the modifiers. So I'll just select this last, um, press Control L and copy modifiers. Make sure that you apply all your transforms, right click and shade smooth and also turn on auto smooth. So it should be looking good now. And we definitely need to also make sure that we shift E to duplicate this and press E to extrude it outwards a bit, just so that we have this one extra part, which is where the bolt itself will be. And now we've pretty much made this part. Okay, so we can get started by making this part now. So I'll just add in a cube and I'll just do my best to scale it. And in this case, I'm going to eyeball it a bit. So I'll select these two vertices, extrude it from here to here. And I'm going to extrude it once here, 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 and here. So I'm just um, controlling, control and right clicking like so. And it should be fine. I'm going to just match the reference the best I can. Like so. 
So I'll make sure this one is on the center of the X. And I'll also make sure that the width, the overall width is good. So something like this. Now, if you were to look at it from the front, you can definitely see that the front is a bit more narrow. So I'm going to just press S and X to scale this part down a bit. And I'm going to make sure that um, I also scale this part and these parts down accordingly, just to match the reference a bit better. So what I'll do is to just add in the bevel modifier now. So I'll just copy it from this one. Control L, copy modifiers. Make sure you apply all your skills. Right click and shade smooth and make sure to turn on auto smooth. Now I definitely want to catch some bevels on these parts. So I'm going to put some effort to making this. And I guess now we can start working on the handle. So in this case, we can treat it more like a cube. So I'll just add in a cube and I'll just start from the back over here. So I'll move it here. And I'll control and right click just to get the overall shape of it right. I'm going to move it like so. So I'm trying to also get the spacing as even as I can because it usually will result in a better mesh like so and make sure that now it is in the center of the world. Now I'm going to just scale it so it matches the reference and also we're going to do one subdivision so that um, it looks a bit more rounded. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to add in a loop cut here and here as well as one over here and over here. So it should subdivide pretty well. So I'll press Control and 1 to subdivide it once. And I'll just press Control A to apply it. And we have this nice little shape. Now, for now, I'll just right click and shade it smooth. And I'm going to choose which parts I want the bevel on. So for now, I'll add in a bevel modifier as well. And it looks like it will do a pretty good job just using the angle bevel. And I'm also going to make sure that I harden normals and turn on auto smooth. And it should look pretty decent now. Okay, so now I'm going to look at it from the side and try to create this kind of shape. So this one is kind of the same thing. You can add in a cube. And I'm going to just rotate it by 45 degrees for now. Well, it looks a bit more than 45, so maybe around um, 60 degrees and I'm going to just scale it and make sure that it's the overall size okay so I'm going to just select these two vertices and I'm going to slide it as well as these ones I'm going to slide it till it meets here I'll add in the loop cut with control R right click so that it stays in place control B to bevel and I'll just add it like this so I'll hit control B to bevel and just turn the segments up a bit maybe to around here, right click and select all and merge by distance. Make sure that this one is in the center of the world. And now I'm going to just move it in. So now I can definitely um, bevel it once. So I accidentally hit my mesh. So I'm just going to... So when things disappear um, accidentally, it's because like you disabled the collection. So you can just like enable it by pressing here. And I'm going to scale it down a bit and try to get it to fit the handle a bit better. So something like so. Apply your scale. And now let me do a bevel. Control B to bevel. And something like this is already pretty good. So I'm going to just select all, right click and merge by distance. And I'm going to select this, these ring of edges by alt and left clicking. And I'm going to just bevel it once. So I'm going to add a modifier, add in a bevel, turn the segments up to three. Well, four actually, and I'm going to right click shade smooth, turn on hard and normals and auto smooth. So it should look pretty decent. So now we just need to add this one groove. Okay, so I'll copy it over from this. So shift D to duplicate. I'm going to just go into edit mode and just scale it down. I'm going to just get the approximate size for it. So something like this. Just make sure you delete the back face because we won't really need it. And now we've gotten a pretty good handle. 
Now the area on the back, we definitely need to um move this part back. So I'm gonna just move it, and I'm gonna do a bevel. So Control B to bevel, and I'm gonna just have this part be a bit more rounded. And this may have been too far, so I'll just move it back a bit, and Control B to bevel, like so. And right click and merge by distance. So now we have a pretty good shape, and. For this one, I think I'm just going to dissolve this edge because we don't really need it. Okay, so I'm going to work on this one part in the back. And so for that part in the back, we can just add in a plane. So Shift A, add in a plane. And I'll just move it. And I'll scale it till it fits a good size because you can't really see it. So something like this size is good enough when you look at it from the top view. I'm going to apply my scale. Add in a few loop cuts so that it just fits the overall size of this. I'm going to just move it somewhat close to back. And I'm going to move it somewhere around here. So around this much is good enough. I'm going to just add a modifier. And this time it's going to be a shrink wrap. And what the shrink wrap does is when you choose a target, it's going to just lie flat on top of it. And I'll just turn the offset up just a bit. And I'll also turn on the solidify modifier, which adds a bit of thickness. And on top of that, I will also add in a bevel modifier. And I think in this case, it's already safe to um, apply a shrink wrap. Or maybe I can just move it a bit further. Just scale it down a bit. Like so. Okay. So for now, I'll just apply a shrink wrap and not have it go out too much. So maybe something like this. And I'll just apply the solidify for now. Make sure you turn on even thickness. And I'll also add in a bevel modifier. Turn the segment count to around four. And same thing as before. Just, um, I guess you can just copy from this one again. Control L, copy modifiers. And then I will just make sure that I turn on auto smooth. Okay, so now we just need to add this um, little latch. And I'll just copy it and put it around the back. I guess I can scale it up a bit. Like so. And I guess I made a slight mistake where it isn't really like in the middle. So I'll just move it a bit. Okay, so something like this is pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to start working on the vent area. And for now, I'll just do it on the right side. Okay, so add in a plane, rotate it by 90. And I'm going to just try to get the rough proportions right. So I'm going to put it till here. Go into edit mode and just put it here. And this one till here. And you can just select these two vertices. Make sure you apply your scale in object mode. And just hit Control Shift B to do a bevel on the vertices. And I'll just scroll up until I get a lot of segments maybe around this much. And then I'll just right click and merge by distance. So now it's inside. So let me just move it outside a bit. And looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do an extrusion from inside to out. Try to get the space. And I'm also going to scale it up a bit with the S tool. I'm going to just move it till here and also i'm going to just select these vertices i'm going to move it down so that it matches the curvature a bit better like so and let me just look at it from the top view to see how much it goes out so it definitely goes out not further than this part so i guess it's fine now it looks like our shading is messed up so we have to just select it all and press shift n to normalize everything and we need to do one inset to move this part in. And I'll just press E to extrude it in as well. So now we've got this cool little shape. Right click and shade it smooth. And also make sure to add in a shrink wrap modifier because it is going through our mesh and we want it to sit on our mesh. Go into edit mode. And in the vertex select, I'm just going to select all of these ones in the back. And I'm going to make sure that I put it in its own vertex group. That the reason is because we will we will only sh um, wrap these vertices on the surface in the back. So while these are selected, I'm just going to hit plus on the vertex group and hit assign. 
And also just make sure that you add a modifier, which is shrink wrap, put it on this, but make sure that you only do the vertex group. And if you were to look at it from um, side view, it does look like some of the ones in the bottom are a bit messed up. So I'm going to just move it back a bit and it should be a bit better. I think we can also just skew it a bit just cause um, we want it to match the surface as well as possible so that it matches so that the shrink wrap will work as good as it can. And I think for now, I'll just apply the shrink wrap and see how it looks. So I'll go into local view and it looks pretty good. So for now, I'm going to add in some modifiers and I'll just copy the bevel modifiers from this one. So control L and copy modifier. And I will also make sure to enable auto smooth and shade smooth. Okay. So now before I continue, I'm going to mirror it over onto the other side. So I believe I can just hit, just apply all the transforms and you can go into object and mirror X global. And now it is on the other side for now. I'm going to select these vertices and just try to match um, the parts over here as well as I can. So something like this. Okay, so now we can start adding in our bent lines. And I think we can just take this one and hit Shift D and move it up a bit. And I'll just press E to extrude it upwards. Now we can definitely add an array modifier onto, onto this. So make sure that it is on the Z instead of the X. So zero on the X and for now just one on the Z. And I'll just move it up until it's up here. I'll just move it a bit lower and have a higher count. So something like this. I'll also move it a bit further back. And this area on the back, I'll also try to move it further as well. So somewhere around here is good enough. Now let's see that it's jutting out a bit. So we need to just apply our array modifier first. And for the ones on the top, I'm just going to scale it on the X until I get the shape right. And just make sure, well, I guess you can just select the face and double tap G and slide it because it is slanted a bit. And I think we can definitely just move it lower. So I'll just select these faces. I'll just move it down a bit like so. And now I think I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So now we're done with the vent and we can start working on the barrel itself and this cloth area. Now these two are going to require going into sculpt mode, but I'm sure we can do it. Okay. So you see that um, the shape itself is actually quite difficult to model. You actually have to do a Boolean operation to kind of get it, or you can sub demodel it, but it's in my opinion, it's much easier to just do the way that I'm about to do. So um, add in a mesh and a cylinder. And in this case, I'll just put it at 24 sides. And I'm going to just rotate it on the side and just scale it down to kind of match the overall size of this. So something like this. And I'll move it till around here. I'm going to scale it on the Y and just have it till here. Now apply all your transforms, make sure that you select this face and do a control B to bevel and just turn on the segments till you get at least like some squarish um, faces and right click and merge by vertices. Okay, so this is what we're going to use to cut out of this hole. And before we continue, I'm just going to look for it and I'm going to just pull this uh, one and this one I will call two just so that I can easily find it later because we also need to keep these meshes for the low poly. I will add in a boolean modifier, put it before the bevel modifier. Well, I guess I can put it after and I will select this and you'll see that it'll do a cut, but right now the cut is too shallow. So I'm going to move it lower a bit and try to get some sort of nice shape for the first one. And also make sure that, um, it is in the center of the gun. So I guess we messed up our origin a bit and you can always just go to object, set origin to center of mass. And now you can just put the X to zero. And if I were to hide it, pretty good. So yeah, something like this is pretty good. 
So now we also need to do the same thing we did on the barrels and array it around the barrel, around this part. So I'm going to add in another empty. And I'm going to just, or maybe I can just move my 3D cursor to the center of the world. And I'm going to just do a neat little trick where I use the 3D cursor as a pivot. And I'm going to just go into the front view, press Shift E to duplicate, and press R to rotate. I'm just going to hold Control till I get it around 40 degrees. Well, 45 degrees. I'm going to left click to confirm it. And I'm going to just hit Shift R to repeat the action. And it's going to just keep repeating until we've got the number of pieces that we want. Okay, so now if we were to just take a look at it, it's being boolean pretty well. Let me just also make sure that I move this part a bit forward, like so. And I will also make sure to shade smooth on this one because it actually affects the mesh at the bottom over here. Okay, give a subdivision to this. And let me just disable the boolean modifier first. So I'll give a subdivision and make sure that it is before the boolean. I'm going to add in a bit of a loop cuts. You're trying to have um, as many even geometry as you can so that your sculpting goes well. And I'll just give it two for now. And I think it should be good. Make sure the plier scale as well. So let me just take a look. Yep, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same for this. And I'm going to make sure that I add in a few loop cuts over here and over here. And I guess I should have done it while I had one left. So I'm just going to use the knife tool with the shortcut K and press A to angle it and C to cut through so that it'll just cut through all of them. So I'm going to do the same for this. A to angle and C to cut through. And you should have some nice loops. And I'm going to just hit subdivide. And two subdivisions, good enough. And I'm going to just now just save my project because I'm afraid I'll mess it up. It does annoy me that these parts are a bit, so I'm just going to box select all of these and press I to insert it, and it should look a bit better. Okay, so now save your file and re-enable your boolean, and it should work a bit better. Okay, so now just make sure you just press Shift D while you have both of these selected and just duplicate them. And I'm going to just move them to another collection. And I'll call this um, revolving barrel. And we really need to make sure that we keep a copy of this to get our low poly. Okay, so I'm going to disable this. So um, just make sure that you um, apply your subdivision on this one first. And for this one as well, just make sure to apply your bevel as well as your subdivision. And you can just hide your boolean first. So I will apply it. And now when I delete this, we'll have a pretty clean looking mesh, but we also need to have a bit of a bevel on it. So what I'll do is to just go into sculpt mode, press shift R, and I'm going to just inc increase my voxel remeshing size to something like this. So make sure you don't go too low. Something like 0 0.0025 worked for me, but just make sure you don't go too close to zero. And let me try remeshing. Okay, so it's pretty good. Now I'm gonna use um, the mesh filter and I'm gonna go to surface smooth and I'm gonna just drag to the right and you can see the mesh is like smoothing out a bit. And I'm gonna do another remesh and just smoothing it out like so. And now we have a pretty nice and clean mesh and we have our reference model that we will make a low poly out of as well. So now we're going to work on the handle itself. Okay, so I'm going to start working on the handle on the top. And you can definitely start by adding in a cylinder. And we're going to do a bit of sculpting this time. So I think um, 32 sides is more than enough. I'm going to rotate it by 90 and making sure that it fits around this part. So um, you can change your pivot back to the bounding box. And I'm going to just put it somewhere square between these two. And I'm going to move it here. Okay. So this can be our low poly. And what I'm going to do is to just apply all my transforms. Just going to shade smooth and turn on auto smooth. 
And now I'm going to hit Shift-T to duplicate it. So it stays in place. And I'm going to hide one of them. And now this one will be our designated high poly. Now the way I made this is um, I first just added in some edge loops. And I guess I can just add in a few right now, like so. And I'm going to just Alt-Select and I'm going to use the skew. And I'm going to just move some of them in one direction or the other, like so. Just a quick way to make them, and definitely not the best way. You can always um, choose how you want to make them. I'm going to just like randomly skew them like this. So now we got a lot of random stuff going on. Okay, so now it's a bit more flesh. Okay, so I'm going to just going to alt select all of these. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. Right click so that it stays in place and press P and separate by selection. So then now this is a different object and I'm going to add a modifier and this one will be a solidify modifier like so. So now we got this thing going on. So something like this. And for this one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just alt, alt select these face loops, shift D, right click, and then press P and separate by selection. And these can also be their own um, solidifies. So this one, I'll just make it a bit thinner than the first one. And also, I'll make sure that they have a bevel modifier on top. In this case, you don't need to uh, make sure to turn on auto smooth because we're going to subdivide it quite a lot. And I'm going to turn a bevel on this one as well. So something like this. We definitely need to make sure that's going out a bit more because you definitely have some space. So I'll hit Alt S while they're all selected and just cover it a bit better. And this one as well, I'm going to just add a bit more thickness. And maybe I can just turn down the offset a bit like so. We just don't want there to be like any empty spaces that they can jut out of. And now I'll just turn the bevel a bit lower. Like so. And this one I can get away with. Okay, so I'll subdivide it now. I think control one. Well, control two will be good enough. And same for this one. I'll just subdivide it quite a bit. And if I were to just look at the wireframe, it looks pretty dense. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to object, convert to mesh, and same as this one, object, convert to mesh. So now we have these two pretty dense meshes, and now I can go into sculpt mode on one of them. So I'll just go into object mode and sculpt mode, and now you can press F to increase and decrease your burst size, and you can press shift S, F to um, increase or decrease the strength. And the only brush we're gonna use is this draw sharp, and and um, before we do, we also need to make sure that we remesh it to have way more topology. So I'll hit um, Shift R and just, and just move it up a bit, maybe until like 0 0.0015. And I'll just press Control R to remesh. Okay, like so. And now, if you were to just try to paint on it, you'll make a cool little little crease. And if you press Control and paint on it, you'll make a crease, but like in the opposite direction. So that's what I used for this one. And instead of um, having to just get it perfectly, I'll just do a line stroke. So in your tool panel over here, go into your stroke and change it to line. So what it means is like, you can just draw a line and press control and draw another line and you will just make a bunch of strokes. I'll just do the same for these ones. And it's a pretty repetitive process. So I'm probably gonna time-lapse this. And it's fine if you don't get it right on your first try.
Okay, so the pi the high poly of this is pretty much done. Uh, just make sure to save your blend file. And I think in hindsight, I may have uh, miscounted how many um, holes there are on this barrel, but it's fine. I don't think it messes up the project too much. And just taking a look around. And the last thing is that you actually can model a strap if you want to. In this tutorial, I won't do it. And you can treat it like a homework if you want to, because it wouldn't be too hard after modeling if you manage to model all of these. And I guess we're gonna go into the into the low poly phase. Okay, so I'm gonna start UV unwrapping. And um, as you can see, I've hidden my references. So I've just hidden this collection. And also I have put them all into the first layer. So first thing I wanna do is you just make a big copy. So I'll just select everything except for the camera and lights. And I'll hit Shift D to duplicate. Right click so that it stays in place. Press M and I'll just move to a new collection and I'll call this um, high poly. Okay, and this one I'll just disable for now so that I can just focus on this. So I'll hit Alt H just to see everything I've been hiding. And it looks like, so all the pieces that we know are gonna be in a high poly, let's just select the both of these and yep, just the both of these. And I will just press M and move to the high poly. And for the low poly, if I can find it, so it is this revolving barrel object. So I'm gonna just real quick, um, remove the bevel, the subdivision, and I'll keep the boolean, but I have to remove this subdivision first. So in this case, I'll just keep the boolean and I'll just hide this. And now we got this mesh. Okay, so make sure you save your file. And now what I will do is to just start removing all the modifiers and start unwrapping them. So as we go, I'm gonna just remove the bevel and the array for now, I'll just keep them just to keep things simple. And so what we wanna do is to just go into select, select sharp edges. And before we go there, I wanna just add it to my quick favorites. And the menu will look a bit different because I have other add-ons on. So I would always just use this for now. And for now, I'll just set it to 60 degrees. I think by default, it's at 30 and I'll select these sides as well, but it's not really needed. So I'll just set it to 60 and I'll just do a mark seam, mark sharp. And, and then I'll add a seam on the bottom. So whenever you're UV unwrapping, you always have to think that, think of them like um, wrapping paper. So you wanna you wanna add cuts as if you would with a scissor to wrapping paper to just make them lie down flat on a table. So I guess this one's done. And all I'll do is to just make sure that my matcap is set to object and I will just go to viewport display and I'll just change it to another color. And I'll just show that they are done. And I'll save it and I'll continue on to the next object. So for this one, I can definitely delete these two faces because we won't really need them. And I'll just remove the bottom one. Now, um, for this part, we are definitely going to use the array, but for this one, there are definitely some paint effects that I had before that um, will make it difficult for us to, to use the array because um, if I were to show you the image, like some of the paint effects, we definitely don't want them to be evenly splashed across. We want them to be a lot, a lot more distinct. So I'll just apply my array modifier first. So I'll remove the bevel and apply the array. And the seams are all pretty good. You would just put one seam at the end and it's already done. So um, just make sure that you just unwrap it real quick and this one as well. So I wanna just go to the UV editing just to see if there's any stretching. So I guess there isn't over here. And whoops. And for this one, so just make sure you turn on display stretch. So I'm going to start with this one as well. I'll just delete the back face because we don't really need them. And we will just remove the bevel and we'll keep the array, but we'll make sure that it is in on the inside and we'll do a cut over here as well. So now it will just unwrap as a strip. So just make sure you always put a seam at wherever you see like a 90 degree angle. And let's do this one. So this one, I'll definitely delete this back face because we don't need it. And I will press slash to go into local view. Definitely add a seam over here. 
and for now I'll just add a seam at the bottom and it should unwrap pretty well and if you want to straighten these we can definitely straighten these out later but for now let's just leave it as it is and let me just give all of these the color so that we know that it is unwrapped I mean it is seamed so I'll put this take this color okay so now we get to do this one I'll delete the back face and I will add a seam on the bottom as well as a seam on this face so now unwrap and it should unwrap pretty well give it the color and now we can work on this part so um we definitely should have closed this face from before so I'll just do it now and it's going to be pretty simple you just control select all these and press press f to fill it and in this case we need to apply the mirror modifier because we don't want it to be mirroring in the middle because you people can definitely tell and I'll just remove the bevel okay so I'll just add in select sharp and yep that's pretty good mark seam and over here just add a seam over there as well I'll just press you and unwrap and make sure that um for these ones you just dissolve this edge for now press x and dissolve and just do poke faces because sometimes um blenders triangulation just um, stretches everything out quite a lot so you definitely need to be be careful of those but most of the time it just does a good job so i'll give this over here okay so time to work on this one so I'll remove the bevel and i guess in this case we can keep the mirror modifier because find the mirror from left to right i'll just select sharp edges and i'll mark seam and mark sharp and right click and uv unwrap and now it is good so this one remove bevel and i'll keep the mirror modifier and i definitely have to make these two seams and sharps
one part which I can't find anymore. So this part. So just make sure that you um select the sharps, mark it as a seam as well as a sharp. And if I were to try to unwrap it now, well, it looks like it unwraps pretty decently. Let me also just make sure that yep, these ones are all caught. So yeah, I'll just stick with this for now. There is this one more area. And let me just check if it's in high poly. Okay, so I'm just going to select this and move it over to the main collection. Whoops. And let me just hide the high poly collection again. So now we have this. So we just need to add a seam to the bottom. And delete the two faces on the sides. And now we have this one as well. Okay, so um, just make sure that you um, apply all your skills. So just select everything and apply your skill. Go into edit mode and hit you and unwrap. So now you'll have a pretty big unwrap. And there's definitely a lot of space that's not being used. So you can definitely just um, move it like this. inside the little circles. So if you have a free add-on called UV squares, you can definitely um, square all your strips of UVs. And when you pack them again, it'll definitely make them a lot faster. For example, if I were to just press L to just select these one by one. Sorry, not, not UV squares, um, text tools. And you can definitely just get away with just squaring them and just selecting all of them and hitting pack again. Pack islands. And let's just say that we're happy with this for now. Maybe this one as well. I can just snap it and pack islands. Okay, there's definitely a lot more time you can spend on it. Or if you have the UV pack master add-on, you can just press pack and it'll just do it as well as it can for you. And it's a pretty quick process. But I don't want to spend too much time packing it. So now I'll just get ready with my high poly. Okay, so let's get things started for baking. So I'm going to just select all the low poly items and I'm going to just right click, well, go to face select, right click and hit triangulate first. And it should do a pretty good job. But in case something goes wrong, we can definitely just go back and fix it. And another thing is that um, make sure you save a different Blender file just in case things go wrong. And now I think we can already just go to the high poly. So for the high poly, everything should be okay. I think there was just this one instance where I forgot to fill this part. And let me just try to fix this. I think I can just get away with dissolving these vertices. So now everything else should be okay. Just make sure everything shade is smooth and nothing. Okay, so it should be good. One thing is that I actually want to join these two together. So select the both of these and hit control J. Yeah, should be fine. Okay, so for now, let's start by selecting all of this, going to object, convert to mesh. And now it is all converted to a mesh. I'm going to just select everything and just go into edit mode and just triangulate all the faces. Okay, so everything's triangulated. And the reason is because um, in Substance Painter, whenever you bring something in, it will triangulate it a different way than what Blender is used to. Okay, so I can definitely remove this empty already. And 
Let me just bring back the little poly. So this empty, I can definitely remove as well. Well, I guess I can't. Okay. So for now, I can just apply the array, apply this mirror, and I can definitely see wherever I have modifiers. So I'll just apply this. And it should have, for example, if I were to go to the UV editor, everything should be like um, stacked like they are. I'm going to apply. I can apply this array as well. This one. Just hitting control A. Oh, crap. So this one had a bevel modifier on it. So I'll just remove it. Apply this. Apply this. Just make sure you don't unwrap everything again. And what is this? So this one, I don't think I'll need anymore. So I'll just delete this. And now if I were to delete this empty, should be fine now. So I have this one as well. And I'm just going to remove the bevel. And now it should be all be good. So it's time for us to start grouping things. So I'll just select this, this, this one. And this part. I'm just making sure that I'm selecting things that aren't touching each other. So I'll just select all of these and hit Control J and join them. So this will be the first one. So I'll call this um, set one. And I'll call this set one underscore low. So I'll just hide them and I'll start working on the next batch. So this one, this one. So I'm just selecting them all one by one as I go. And just making sure that I'm not selecting things that overlap. And I'll just select this one. And I can select the vents. Okay, so this one can be the second set. So I'll hit Control J to join them, and I'll call this set B. I mean set two. And score low. And I'll hide them. And all of these, I believe they're all not overlapping too much. So I'll just join all of these. So I'll select them and hit Control J, and this one will be set three underscore low so um same thing for the high poly just make sure that you have the same um objects so i'll go to the high poly i'll select this and i'll just move it to the side and then i'll just hide this oops i'll just hide the rest of these okay so on a high poly i'll select this 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 the one on the top the side ones these two this one and this one. This one on the back. This trigger as well as this. So it should be all of these. And I'll just hit Control J to join them. And I'll just call this one. Set one underscore high. Okay, so now I can just hide this. And let me just do the same thing where I would just select the second set and I'll just move it over to the left. And I'm going to make sure that I select it all for the high poly.
and should be fine now. So now set one, two, three, set one, two, three. So I guess I had it lowercase on this one. Okay, so it's time to start baking. And I'm going to just box select all the low poly objects. Go into File, Export, FBX. And make sure that you set your limit to selected objects. And go into Geometry and turn the smoothing to face only. And for now, I'll just set it to, um, I'll just call it uh, minigun underscore low. And for the high poly, you would call it underscore high. So now let's export it. And I'll just hide this and bring back the high poly. So now I'll just select the, all of these. Go to File, Export, FBX. And same thing. It should keep your settings from before. And this one, you'll call minigun underscore high. It'll take a while to export, so I'll just pause it until it's ready. Okay, so now that it is done exporting, just turn on your Substance Painter and create a new project. And in my case, I'll set the resolution to 4K and make sure that you select your low poly, so minigun underscore low, and also just hit OK. Now, um, one thing I like to do is to just go into my display settings and just turn on temporal anti-aliasing. It just makes the line look a lot smoother. But if your PC can't handle it, it's fine. Bake mesh maps. Go into output size and for starters, just put it at 2K whenever you're doing a test bake. And set your high poly mesh to the underscore high file. And for now, set your match to mesh name. And that'll just make sure that it exploded and some parts, the, the parts that are close to each other aren't overlapping against each other. So for now, I'll just hit bake and it'll take a while. So I'll pause the recording until it's done. Okay, so once your test bake is done, just look around your mesh and see if you have anything, any problems. And um, maybe over here, you'll see that there's a bit of overlapping and that's probably because my ray distance was a bit too high. And just make sure that you don't have any like weird seams around the, the mesh. Sometimes you will, but for now, I'll just um, ignore it for now. And I guess I'll just go to big mesh maps and turn my array a bit lower just to fix that one problem. So 0 0.005 and maybe this one, I'll set it to 0 0.005. And now I think the bake will be okay. So I'll just set my anti-aliasing to something super high, like four times four and set my output size to 4K. And now I'll do a bake and I'll pause it until it's ready. Okay, so now it's done baking and let me just take a look. So everything looks pretty fine. And I'm liking the way the fabric is looking as well. Definitely have some problem in some areas, but for now, let's just stick with this bake. So just remember to save your substance file and then we will start texturing. Hey, so the project looks a bit different because it is actually six months later. I don't really have the original tutorial file anymore, but I do have this, which you can download if you like. For the reference, I also have this, which I quickly textured, but I don't really have the old one anymore, which is fine. And the first thing I want to do first is to just block in all the colors. We can create a fill layer, like so. And whenever you make one, you can just rename it to whatever you like. I'll just rename it to base underscore gold metal first, like so. And I'm gonna just give it a color. So just right click on a background, choose a base color, maybe the golden-ish one. And let me just bring the reference in. So this one is a metallic material. So just make sure to turn your metalness all the way up. It either has to be a one or a zero. And we can turn on roughness, maybe somewhere around here. If the roughness is zero, that means that it looks super smooth, like it's chrome or something. And turning it all the way up just makes it look super matte and rough. So for now, I'll just keep it to around maybe 0.5. And now we can create a folder for this. Call this gold metal, I guess. Golden metal. And just drag the fill layer into here. And the point is so that we can right click on our folder add in a black mask, which will just make everything disappear 
but we can go over here and click on polygon fill and click on this maybe and we can just one by one assign all the materials that we want it to be and if you accidentally put it on one you can just set it all the way to zero and just left click again so just make sure one is to just set the mask to white which is basically what will let us see the material and black is what will hide it so this is good enough i'll, I'll turn my symmetry off so that it's probably the same as you guys and i'll just work on these parts this one as well as this one Control Z will let you just undo it if you make a mistake. So over here we do have a black area, so we can definitely just switch it back to zero and maybe use this UV chunk fill to just deselect this one area so that we have this as well. And I think we got pretty much everything. So that'll be it for the golden material. We can now work on the next one, which is the dark material. So we can just right click on this and click duplicate layers. And this one can be the base underscore dark metal. And I'll rename this as well. So this one, make sure to set it to a darkish color. And just right click on a mask and just hit clear mask so that it's just a fresh mask again. And while the mask is still selected, you can go over here and we can start doing the same thing where we just start assigning all our black metal material. So this, it does look like we missed some golden one. So let me just go back over here. as well as this one on the bottom. And I think I got him. So I'll go back to this mask and start adding in. Okay, so we've pretty much gotten all the dark metal area. We can already just duplicate this layer again, and we can start adding in the pink painted layers. I'm going to just give it a more pinkish color. And this time, the, the paint itself isn't really a metallic material. So we can definitely just go and set our metallic all the way down. And we can right click and clear our mask. Now this pink is probably a bit too bright. So I'm going to just have it be a lot darker, like so. And now we can click on this and start assigning it to all objects. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to add it to this one, but let's just put it over here for now because it is a more fabric -y material, but I definitely don't want to spend too much time making too many materials for this tutorial. So over here, we have our wooden one. So duplicate it again. Like so. And this one will be a more brownish material. Like so and just make sure to clear the mask again and assign it to this object i guess this one needs the golden material so let me just put it over here as well and i think we've pretty much gotten most of these so now we can actually start working on all the texturing in the next video Another thing is that I also want to start working on the height a bit because we do have some areas where we have some height going in and out. So I will just 
maybe. In this case, I can just create one fill layer and that's it. And I'll just call this height now. I'll right click on this and just Alt and left click on the height channel. So that's only this one. And I'll just move it down a bit on this slider. And now we can just right click on this, add in a black mask. And while we have it on the brush, just make sure to select the brush and we can go to the front view and start trying to sculpt the bit. So left click will let you draw in some lines. So maybe I'll just draw a few. And we have the little nose. If you shift and left click, you can draw in a straight line. If you use the bracket keys, you can make your brush a bit smaller. Another thing is that we can definitely right click and add in a color node, but we can have it be a darker color. I'll just set it all the way to black because we can then just set it to multiply and turn down the opacity of it like so. So it looks a bit more shadowed. And I'll just do the same and add it to some other places that need it. So for example, over here. And we can draw some straight lines for this part. We do have some height over here as well on the screw heads. So I'm gonna just do that over there real quick. Okay, so another thing is that I wanna add in an ambient occlusion layer. So I'll just add in another fill. But this time it'll just be color and I'll just have it um, be over here add a black mask and in that black mask I'll right click and add in a generator and for this generator I'll just add in an occlusion like so and I think it's supposed to be inverted so let me first just set it to a dark color and then go to the ambient occlusion generator and just do it global invert so now we can have it over here instead of relying on the shader settings, which we won't see in other softwares. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for this part. In the next one, we'll actually start making some nice little smart materials. So I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay, so we can start working on our base golden material. And what I'll do first is to maybe first just darken this base one a bit more because we're gonna use our second layer to lighten everything up. So duplicate this layer. I'll right click and hit duplicate layers. And I'll also just make sure to set it to a more brighter yellowish color. Add in, right click and add in a black mask. And in the black mask, right click and add in a fill layer. And we can definitely look for a lot of grunge or dirt maps. So let me try looking for a dirt one. So we have this dirt number four, and this is pretty good. We can definitely change our balance a bit and right click on this add in a filter and for this filter just make sure to right click again and add in a blur slope so you can just type it in blur slope and you should be able to have this one now change the intensity a bit so that it's blending in with the rest of the gun a bit better but let's see so i think i want this base to be a bit more rough and darker, like so. And for this one, I'll have it be a bit lighter so that we can have it stand out a lot more. So now we have a nice little blending and we can definitely change the balance of everything a bit more if you like. So for now, I think something like this is pretty cool. So we can definitely add in a second color variation. So I will just name this to color variation one color one, I guess. And I'll just press control C and V to copy and paste them. 
And for this one, I'll just switch the grunge texture to another one, maybe to dirt number one. Let's see how it looks. And let me set it to a pretty strong color for now. So we have this bluish color and I like it quite a lot, but we definitely can turn the balance a bit lower and turn the contrast up. So something like this, and we can already just turn the opacity down for the bluish material so that we have some really nice looking color variations. So maybe for now, something like this would be pretty nice, but we can always just go back and change it if we need to. So for now, I'm pretty happy with this. We can start working on our second material. So for this black one, we're gonna do the same thing where we add in two different color variation. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this. I'm gonna right click, add in a black mask, and also just add in a fill to this one. Now I'll just change the color to something a, a bit more brighter, like so, maybe this reddish color. And just make sure that it's a black mask and fill. And we can try whichever one we want. This time I'm gonna go a bit more random. Maybe this grunge dirt splat. This one looks pretty cool. And we can do the same thing where we add in the blur slopes. Now, if you've ever watched Stylized Station, they definitely have a lot of really good tutorials on stylized texturing. So I would definitely recommend them when you have the chance. I'll just copy and paste this. And this one, I'll just change it to another one. So maybe this crunch spots, but this one will be a maybe a more greenish color. And we can definitely have some really nice color variation like so. So let's see, maybe instead of red, I can have it be a bluish tint. Like so. And one thing that is really important is to have some roughness variation. So let me just make sure to go over here to my golden material and I'm going to just turn this to roughness. Now our base one is around point, let's set it to 0.6 and the second one I'll set it to maybe 0.5 and this one I'll set it to around 0.45 or 0.46 I guess. And what it does is that we'll end up with a lot of um, roughness variation and it's definitely useful to get a really nice and interesting result. And let me just maybe turn it a bit lower. To maybe 0.3. And this one can be around like 0.4. So if I were to look at roughness now, it's definitely a lot more contrasted. So for this metal one, I definitely want it to be overall more rough than the golden one. So just make sure to turn, turn the roughness down a lot, one by one, until you have some clear darker spots as well as just a overall lighter one. Okay, so something like this is pretty cool. We can start working on our painted material. So I'll just click on this. And I'm gonna just copy it over. First one, I'll just have it be a brighter color. And let me just hide this. And I'll add a black mask to this. Right click on this and add in a fill. Just add in a grunge texture. Maybe we can try a, this grunge dirt scratchy one. And it does look super um, spotty. So we might have to pick one with bigger spots. Okay, I'll just try this for now, but we can just turn the scale down to something a bit lower, like 0.5, so that it's a bit bigger. And then I'm going to just add in a filter and same filter, it will be the blur slope. So we can have some cool little color variation. And I think overall, I want it to look a lot darker than what it is now, like so. And this one, I'll also just make it a bit darker as well. And I think by now it would be a really good time to start adding in edge highlights. So go, go to your first material and just add in a fill. Make sure to add in a black mask. But for this one, make sure to add in a generator and set it to middle edge wear. So you see that we have it all around this. And 
your roughness needs to be lower than everything else because um wherever you have edge wear is usually where you have everything the most smooth so maybe something like this and just change the color make sure that this one is also a metalish color i mean a metalish material Select the metal edge wear, and we can just turn it down a bit so that it doesn't cover everything. So something like this is pretty cool. I'm just going to copy this one and paste it into the dark metal one. And we don't want it to be the same one. We want it to be more grayscale. And just add a bit more color to it. Maybe this warmer color. And I'm pretty happy with this. So same thing, same thing with our painted pink one. And honestly, like on the edgeware, we should definitely have it still be metallic because it is um probably just metal painted over. So something like this is pretty cool. And we can definitely add in just a second color variation. I'll just set it to maybe a yellowish color, maybe. And then I'll just add in a black mask. And a fill to the black mask. Okay, maybe something like this is a good start. Just turn the balance down quite a bit because we don't want it to appear too much, like so. And then we can add in a blur slope for this one. Now maybe maybe a bluish, a yellowish color isn't too nice, so we can definitely just try to have some brighter pinkish colors. I guess for this one, we definitely need to have it be a different material. I'm just reducing the metal edge wear on this one a bit more. And for the cloth, I'm just going to duplicate this whole pink, and pink painted material. But for the edge wear, instead of having it be metal, I'm going to just set the metalness to zero. And I'm going to just make sure to clear, well, I guess remove the mask and just bring it in again. But I'll just have it only cover this one object. So for the edge wear, we definitely don't want it to be too much or too grungy. So turn the grunge amount all the way down. And we can have the color be something like this for now. Okay, so now we can work on the wooden material. And I believe we can just copy paste this. And I'm going to right click, add in a black mask and add in a fill. And I hope they have a wood fill. So maybe this one will be a good start for now. Let me just try to turn the color up. So this is pretty nice, but it's tiling pretty big. So select this, right click, and for the scale, just turn it up a tiny bit. Maybe two, two round three has worked for me. And I'm gonna just change the rotation until it's around point, well, I guess around 90 degrees. So this looks pretty cool. And I'll just turn the opacity down a bit because I don't want it to stand out too much. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The turret textured, I can definitely just 
change the color of this one, change the opacity of this one to be a bit brighter. And I think for now, I'm pretty happy with the texturing. So in the next video, we're going to bring it into Sketchfab. Oh, and before that, I actually want to just add in another occlusion layer. I'll just copy paste this. But for this one, I'm going to just make sure to add in a filter and add in blur slope because I want there to be like this kind of nice little painterly effect on the occlusion areas. But make sure to just set it to multiply and to turn the contrast down a bit, quite a lot. Maybe around this is good enough. And we can definitely just turn down this one as well to just balance a bit. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. So thanks for following along. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay, so once you're ready, we can start exporting them into Sketchfab. So go to File, Export Textures. And in an output template, you can set it to Sketchfab. And just hit export. You may have to make an account, but it's a free account and you will get to share your models with your friends or as a portfolio work. So I'll just hit export. It'll take a while. And for now, I'll just call this um, test gun, I guess. And then just hit upload. Okay, so once it's done uploading, it'll probably show something like this, which looks super terrible, but we can go and edit our 3D settings. For the background, I usually just like to make it a darkish color. For the feel of view, I usually like it to be maybe around 50, I guess, or 45, so that you can at least see a bit of the front a bit better. And in the post-processing, turn on screen space reflections. That'll just make everything look a lot more deep. And turn on the ambient occlusion, but I don't want it to be too strong, so I'll just turn it down a bit. Turn up the sharpness. But again, not too strong, maybe around this much. And for now, I'll just leave this part as it is. For the lighting, I do like the industrial room. If you were to hit Alt and right click, you can rotate your HDR around and I'll just have it so that this part is lit pretty well. So you can also play with your brightness a bit. I won't turn it up too much, maybe around this much is fine. And we can definitely just start having our ground shadows as well. Now instead of the shadow catcher, I'll have it be a baked ambient occlusion. And that just makes it so that it looks like it has really nice shadow. And I think the screen space is a bit too strong, so I'll just turn it down a bit. Okay, so something like this. Now, I'll turn on the lights, but I'll just disable these two. Because I'm going to just make sure this one is rotated to the top. Usually, I just set it to something pretty high so I can see it a bit better. So that's a pretty nice one. I'll just have it be like a slightly warmer light. Like so. Now I'll just turn it down a bit and we can turn on our second light. And this one, I want it to be a bluish light. And I want it to just fit the rim of the gun itself. So I'm just gonna rotate the light so that it hits the top of this. Okay, so something like this. And for the third light, I want it to be a pretty strong red looking light. I'm gonna power up and just change it to a reddish color, maybe like so. So something like this, just turn the light down a bit now and just have it appear just a bit. Looks 
I'll turn the line, light intensity a bit down because I'm looking more for the ambient light than the overall light over here. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We can definitely change the color of the background a bit. It can either be a cool or a warmish color. Maybe in this case, I'll just set it to something a bit cooler. Like so. We can definitely have a bit of chromatic aberration, maybe around 0 0.001. I definitely don't like using vignette or bloom for now because it does make it a bit harder to look at. So for the tone mapping, I think I'll set the contrast to 0 0.01. Usually I like setting it up a bit. You can also just play with the saturation a bit if you like. Maybe we can start using some color balance. And I think I'll just only change the shadow and just turn it up a tiny bit. So 0 0.01 maybe. If I were to see the difference. I think something like this I like a bit better. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with this end result. I'll just set it to something like this and make sure to also save your view. So another thing is um, to just hit publish when you're done with everything. But for now, let me just go back to my properties because I want to just set it to private. I think whenever you use Substance Painter for the first time to upload a 3D model, um, you, you just get Sketchfab Pro by default, which is pretty useful. I'll just set mine to private. And I'm going to hit save and publish privately. But you guys can put in all the title and description you want and publish it publicly. So if I want to see my model, there it is. And one pretty handy way of taking screenshots, um, just type in Sketchfab screenshot. You'll see over here, there's a lab stuff Sketchfab thingy. You can just open it up and you can load in your 3D scene. So if I were to just go over here and load it in, So from URL, you can just copy the link and put it oops, over here. And you can render it, it in transparent if you want to. But for now, I'll just have it be rendered in um, with the background. And one really cool thing that I do is to just render it and double the resolution so that I could scale it down afterwards. Like so. Hit enter. And I think the screenshot has been exported. And now we have this new image. So thanks for following along. Um, and thank you for Double Peace for giving me the chance to show this tutorial series on your channel. Well, if you want to download the model, you can just download it in my Gumroad. And I guess that's goodbye. Thanks for following along.